examination of a comatose patient produced by the Weill Cornell Sign Medical students. Coma is a state of unarousable unresponsiveness in which the patient lies with their eyes closed. The patient is unable to interact with environmental stimuli but has evidence of partial or complete brainstem function. Several conditions mimic coma, including minimally conscious state, vegetative state, locked-in syndrome, or brain death. These conditions vary in their physiological findings, prognosis, and standards of care, thus requiring accurate diagnosis. Coma can be caused by structural or metabolic injury. Structural damage to the thalamus or reticular activating system can occur as a result of an abscess, infarct, tumor, or hemorrhage, and can lead to focal neurological deficits. Non-focal neurological damage can occur from metabolic imbalance, ingestion of toxic substances, or bihemispheric dysfunction resulting from expanding compressive subdural hematomas, subarachnoid hemorrhage, hydrocephalus, or diffuse trauma. A three-step approach to assessing a patient with reduced consciousness includes 1. Evaluate coma depth with the Glasgow Coma Scale, 2. Evaluate brainstem function, and 3. Assess for focal signs. The Glasgow Coma Scale is used to assess the level of consciousness for coma prognosis. The scale grades coma severity using eye-opening, verbal, and motor response. Whenever possible, the scale should be administered prior to intubation, sedation, or interventions that may influence grading. Clinicians assess brainstem function by monitoring pupillary responses, eye movements, corneal reflexes, facial symmetry, the gag reflex, and vital signs. Pupillary response and size can assist in determining cause or etiology. For example, opioid overdose leads to small reactive pupils, whereas compression of CN3 leads to a unilaterally dilated pupil. The corneal reflex involves cranial nerves 5 and 7 and can be measured by lightly touching the cornea with a cotton swab or drop of sterile saline. The corneal touch should cause the patient to reflexively blink, indicating that the pons and midbrain are intact. Loss of the corneal reflex is a poor prognostic sign in coma. The oculocephalic reflex is important for assessing brainstem function. In comatose patients with lesions to CN 3, 4, 6, or 8, or the median longitudinal fasciculus, the eyes follow the same direction as the head turn. The oculovestibular reflex, or cold water caloric testing, assesses lower brainstem dysfunction. With lower brainstem injury, eyes fail to move towards the side with injected cold water and there is no nystagmus away from the side of cold water injection. The gag reflex can be measured using a laryngoscope and tongue depressor to determine functions of cranial nerves 9 and 10. Patterns of respiration may assist with localization. Periodic cycling, such as Cheyenne-Stokes respiration, indicates dysfunction of both hemispheres or diencephalon. Hyperventilation with respiratory rates of greater than 25 breaths per minute may indicate midbrain or upper pontine damage. An inspiratory gasp with respiratory pauses of about 3 seconds after full inspiration suggests pontine or medullary lesions. This type of breathing often progresses to respiratory arrest. The motor exam consists of assessment for muscle tone, reflexes, and posturing. Decorticate posturing, where there is flexion of the upper extremities and extension of lower extremities, indicates damage above or at the level of the midbrain. Decerebrate posturing, where there is extension of the upper extremities, indicates severe damage extending below the midbrain and pons. Progression from decorticate to decerebrate posturing often indicates uncal or tonsillar herniation. Withdrawal from a painful stimulus indicates there is a localizing motor response. In contrast, triple flexion is a spastic spinal reflex where there is dorsiflexion of the ankle, knee, and hip following cutaneous stimulation. Unlike a withdrawal reflex, with a triple flexion response, the patient will often relax while the painful stimulus is still present. For more information on assessing a comatose patient, including relevant laboratory and imaging findings, please see the course resources.